Good day, fellow disciple of Jesus. Welcome to prayer on Friday, the 17th of November. This is first day of Synod. I appreciate your prayers for Synod. We'll pray for Synod today. But as it is Friday, we begin with a reflection on our discipleship, our walk with the Lord. We'll take a quiet moment as we take a deep breath and present ourselves to God. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of day. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by God's infinite goodness and mercy. Together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips together, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us together. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 89, one of the longer psalms in the collection. Today we'll do verses 1 through 8 and 14 to 18. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. The heavens bear witness to your wonders, O Lord, and to your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can compare to the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the gods? God is much to be feared in the council of the holy ones, great and terrible to all those round about him. Who is like you, Lord God of hosts? O mighty Lord, your faithfulness is all around you. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Love and truth go before your face. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness, for you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly the Lord is our ruler, the Holy One of Israel is our King. Let us pray. Remember us, gracious God, when we cannot see your way and purpose, and renew in us the joy of your kingdom of light and life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen.
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue in our reading of First Maccabees chapter 1, verses 41 to 63. This is the installation of Gentile cults in the land of Israel. Then the king wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, and that all should give up their particular customs. All the Gentiles accepted the command of the king. Many even from Israel gladly adopted his religion. They sacrificed to idols and profaned the Sabbath. And the king sent letters by messengers to Jerusalem and the towns of Judah. He directed them to follow customs strange to the land, to forbid burnt offerings and sacrifices and drink offerings in the sanctuary, to profane Sabbaths and festivals, to defile the sanctuary and the priests, to build altars and sacred precincts and shrines for idols, to sacrifice swine and other unclean animals, and to leave their sons uncircumcised. They were to make themselves abominable by everything unclean and profane, so that they would forget the law and change all the ordinances. He added, Whoever does not obey the command of the king shall die. In such words he wrote to his whole kingdom. He appointed inspectors over all the people and commanded the towns of Judah to offer sacrifice town by town. Many of the people, everyone who forsook the law, joined them, and they did evil in the land. They drove Israel into hiding in every place of refuge they had. Now on the fifteenth day of Chislev, in the 145th year, they erected a desolating sacrilege on the altar of burnt offering. They also built altars in the surrounding towns of Judah and offered incense at the doors of the houses and in the streets. The books of the law that they found, they tore to pieces and burned with fire. Anyone found possessing the book of the covenant or anyone who adhered to the law, was condemned to death by decree of the king. They kept using violence against Israel, against those who were found month after month in the towns. On the twenty-fifth day of the month, they offered sacrifice on the altar that was on top of the altar of burnt offering. According to the decree, they put to death the women who had their children circumcised, and their families, and those who circumcised them, and they hung the infants from their mothers' necks. But many in Israel stood firm and were resolved in their hearts not to eat unclean food. They chose to die rather than to be defiled by food or to profane the holy covenant, and they did die. Here ends the reading. This is a horrible and sad act of genocide. Given the present world circumstances, it's especially sad to read. May the Lord grant us grace to be covenant keepers. Amen. Revelations chapter 19, verses 11 to 16, a short reading today. The rider on the white horse. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has his name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As the reading suggests to us, the rider on the white horse is the Christ returning as warrior, Messiah, judge and king. On his robe and on his thigh are written King of kings and Lord of lords. This reference is back to chapter 17, verse 14. They will make war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will overcome because He is Lord of lords and King of kings.
This is the highly exalted Lord returning to judge the nations. And when we consider this fierce judgment, when we consider this with great humility and awe, the Maccabees writing paints a good picture of the nations and the evil of the nations in rebellion against God's goodness. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now let us pray to God, the Father of Lord Jesus Christ, for the whole church and for all the earth, saying, direct our hearts to keep your law, responding, Lord, have mercy. Make your church faithful to your word, not seeking to satisfy human expectations, but clinging solely to your will and command. Direct our hearts to keep your law together. Lord, have mercy. Make your people to listen to the words of the prophets you send, that we may not stray from the paths you have set for us to walk in. Make our country a blessing to all the nations of the earth by seeking justice above all things and lead us in the paths of peace. Direct our hearts to keep your law together. Lord, have mercy. Teach us to pray earnestly night and day that the distressed and afflicted may find comfort. This day we especially pray for the hostages in Gaza, for all the families in Gaza and Israel mourning their lost loved ones. We too pray for those who are mourning, the Jesuvant family and the Brown family, especially Randy. Lord, by your grace, may we with them endure in faith to the end. Direct our hearts to keep your law together, Lord, have mercy. We beg you by your great might to transform the hunger and hatred and violence which surround us into birth pangs of the new age. Direct our hearts to keep your law together. Lord, have mercy. Make each of us increase and abound more and more in love to one another and to all people and so prepare the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray for our synod today for representatives Hortense Anglin and Joanne Millet. Almighty and ever-living God, source of all wisdom and understanding, be present with those who take counsel in the Diocese of Toronto for the renewal and mission of your church. Teach us in all things to seek first your honor and glory. Guide us to perceive what is right and grant us both the courage to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And now the blessing of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifying Spirit rest upon you and all that you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Have a blessed day today and a good weekend. We hope you'll join us in worship for Sunday morning prayer this Friday as we try new ways of worshiping together at St. Philip's. The Lord be with you. TGIF.